Hello everyone, this is Nick Red Ace coming to a brand new video. This time we're going to be going into Yu-Gi-Oh! Something I haven't touched in ages. And we're going into Golden Zombies, especially Golden Zombies Fusion. So I'm using the new Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Mega. It's uh, still in beta, has some bugs to work out. As you can see, straight off the bat, this still has a lot of the original essence of the Zombie Revenant decks I made in the past. We still have Necro World Banshee, Solitaire, Uni Zombie. We only have one Swallow Slash. We still have Mizuki, still have Zombie World, and we still have Doom King Balrog. The reason those are all in here is because they still enhance the deck and still gives you more of a, a synchro presence. I didn't want to go full just fusion because if you make a one trick pony, all it takes is an opponent figuring out that one weakness and your entire deck falls apart. But we're going to go into the new cards. Back when I stopped doing Yu-Gi-Oh! videos, all these were still in their Japanese print. We haven't actually got an English version of these when I was still doing videos. So now that I'm back, we can look into the new ones, which is... I think the ones that didn't exist back in the day when I started, or not started, but when I stopped, was Cursed Eldlan, De Seven Cities definitely didn't exist, and I think Golden Land Forever didn't exist. And obviously the Mad... Golden Lord didn't exist because it's based on Seven Cities. So let's start with the new cards. So first off we have the Seven Cities of the Golden Land. During your main phase you can fusion summon one fusion monster from your extra deck using only zombie monsters from your hand or field as fusion material. Pretty easy to bring out. By pretty easy I mean super easy because all these cards, the elixirs such as Elixir of Scarlet Sanguine, Elixir of Black Awakening, and Elixir of White Destiny, all of them work together with cards like Conquistador, Guardian, uh, there's another one I don't use because it doesn't have much of a use in the deck, and they all come together, they banish each other to bring them others back on the field. So this card, first off, since you can use your hand or your field, makes it super easy to bring out your main fusion, which is going to be the Mad Golden Lord. So the second part of Seven Cities of the Golden Land is whenever you special summon a zombie monster, by card effect, you can target one set card in Spell and Trap Zone, and that set card cannot be activated for this turn. So it's really good when you're summoning Mad Golden Lord, target an opponent's card, if they only have one set, if they have multiple, just hope you choose the right one, and then you attack, you don't have to worry about that card. Pretty good card for fusion summoning. The only real card that I can see you using this for with this deck is Draco <laughs> Dragon Necro Nether Soul Dragon. Uh, which is only OCG, which kind of sucks, but it's a really good card. Um, requires two zombie types, so it's two of any monster. <laughs> cannot be destroyed by battle with this card. Monsters cannot be destroyed by battle with this card. It can be destroyed by battle, but its effect still activates. So, at the end of the damage step, the card that this battles, its attack becomes zero, and then you summon a token that has the original level and attack, I believe, original attack. Yeah, the original level, original attack of that monster. So this is very good for monsters like, uh, Chaos Max Dragon, you attack it, this card's going to be destroyed obviously, you're going to take a thousand damage, but then Chaos Max Dragon now has zero attack and you have a 4,000 beat stick. It doesn't have all the effects of Chaos Max, but you have 4,000 beat stick. And this is super easy to get out. Even easier to get out once it's been destroyed. Alright, the next card is Cursed Eldland, which is the generic search card of this deck. So, first effect, you cannot declare attacks except with zombie monsters, which isn't a problem with this deck since 90% are zombie monsters. And, of course, when Zombie World's on the field, all of my cards are zombie monsters. You can only use each of the following effects once per turn. Pay 800 life points, add one Eldritch monster or one Golden Land Spell or Trap card to your hand. Which is these guys, this, or Golden Lord. Which usually is a problem, you might be like, but well, we can't get Elixir. When these guys are banished, we get the Elixirs, don't you worry. If this card is sent from the spell or traps onto the graveyard, you can send one Eldritch Monster or Golden Land spell or trap card from your deck to the graveyard. Which then you can banish because you haven't activated their effects that turn and get an Elixir. That shouldn't be much of a problem though. Next we have Elixir of Black Awakening. This is where Golden Zombies are one of the best additions to the zombies in a long time. Mostly because they're super splashable and this Elixir, we can remove half of these cards like all the Golden Land, Guardian, the Conquistador, Golden Land Forever, and just have Eldritch and the Elixirs, and we'd be set. Wouldn't even need Cursed Eldland. 
we'd be set. So, Elixir of the Black Awakening says, Special summon one zombie monster from your hand or deck in defense mission. But, and all Elixirs have this part, if you control no Eldritch monsters, you can only special summon an Eldritch monster. There's only two Eldritch monsters, and that's Eldritch the Golden Lord, or Eldritch the Mad Golden Lord. So, of course it doesn't matter, because getting him out, he's a pretty decent defense, decent attack card, so, pretty good. So, once you have him out, though, hand or deck, any zombie cards. So, if I have him in my hand, I summon him, and then I can activate this, get a solitaire, my synchro play is set. Really good. For the rest of this turn, after this card resolves, you cannot special summon monsters except for zombie monsters. Again, not too much of a problem. You can banish this card from your graveyard, set one gold land spell or trap directly from your deck. But, you can only use one of the effects each turn. So that means if you activate this card, you can't banish it the same turn you activate it. Which is that's fine, I don't, not too bad. But as you can see, it speeds up zombie decks like tenfold. Because, oh look, I have an Eldritch, and now any zombie monster from my deck. Next we have Elixir of White Destiny, which is a quick play card. And same thing, special summon one zombie monster from your hand or graveyard. Which means this is probably the only one that you could have that would be a possible dead draw. Because if you don't have Eldritch at all, and you have this card, you're kind of screwed. Because you can't summon Eldritch from the graveyard or your hand if you don't have it in your graveyard or your hand. Same thing though, banish it, get a golden land spell or trap card. That's it. That's pretty much it for that one. Next we have uh, Scarlet Sanguine, it's a trap card, special summon one zombie monster from your deck or graveyard. Same thing, if you don't have an Eldritch monster, same thing, banish it, set a golden land spell or trap card directly from your deck. Uh, this one I use a little bit more because it's a pretty much the same effect as Black Awakening, except when I use the effects of Conquistador or Guardian, I can set it during my opponent's turn and then activate it during my turn, or vice versa, and then immediately get an extra zombie monster out if I need it. So it's really good. Also, if I activate it during my opponent's turn, usually at their end phase, I can then immediately go into like an Omega that I wouldn't be able to go on if I activate during my turn. Because you can't summon Omega on your turn if you activate one of these cards. That's one of the few downsides. Next we have El Eldorado Ald Adelatino? Adelatado? Adelatado. I probably butchered that horribly, I'm sorry. If you control an Eldritch monster, which again, there's only two, you can activate one of these effects. You can shuffle three of your banished elixir spell traps with different names into your deck, destroy all cards in the field. Or, you can shuffle three of your banished gold land spell trap cards with different names into your deck, and if you do, have your opponent's life, and then you gain life equal to their life points. You can only activate one of these per turn. So, I can only use the destroy all cards effect, because I don't have all three of the, uh, well no, I could use that, I do have seven cities of the golden land. So never mind, I could do that. It'd be a little bit harder, but it's possible. The reason I don't have a bunch of these is, it doesn't say your opponent's cards, it says destroy all cards on the field. And though this is a zombie deck, so we can easily summon our stuff back if we have Mizukis in the graveyard. Eh, it's probably best to just wait. What I've used this for is if my opponent has a whole bunch of cards and they're just stalling me, and I have something like the Mad Lord, which has is indestructible from card effects, I'll just be like, screw it, destroy everything but him, and then use Mizuki to summon back other big cards and just go for game. So now we have one of the intermediate boss monsters for the deck, one of the main monsters for the deck. Eldritch the Golden Lord, with 2500 attack and 2800 defense, he's a decent card. His effects are, you can send this card and one spell trap card from your hand to the graveyard, target one card on the field, send it to the graveyard. The card, the way of getting it into the graveyard is, of course, sending any of these to the graveyard. It says any spell trap, but let's be honest, you're going to use one of these to activate their effects, of course. And since, again, if you're, since you're not activating the effects, you can immediately banish them and do it that way. Also, since it says send to the graveyard, not destroy, it gets past a card effects like his own card effect or Beals or something like that. So that's pretty decent. Also, it works on spells and traps. Really good. His second effect, you can send one spell trap card you can Yep, one spell trap card you control to the graveyard, add this card to your hand, and then special summon one zombie monster from your hand. And the additional effect is if you do this, it gains a thousand attack and defense, I believe. I would love to show you, but I can navigate this small line. Ah, that's what it says, trust me. That's pretty good, and the main reason you're going to be using it is just to summon him. 
because the way it works, you add him to your hand, and then you summon him using his own effect. What in all it costs is one spell trap card. So that's pretty good. I haven't tested it. I'm pretty sure you can use it on the trap cards after they've already been activated. Not sure why you would use that, but you can. So he's he's solid. Overall, solid card. He's required for this deck because three of these cards require him to activate additional effects. Speaking of which, we're gonna go straight into Golden Land Forever. Counter Trap. When a spell, trap, or monster effect is activated while well, you control an Eldritch monster, him or his fusion, tribute one zombie monster, negate the activation, and destroy that card. You can only activate once per turn. One of these per turn. I don't know why you can only activate one of these per turn, because you already have a stipulation saying you need to have an Eldritch monster, but it's still a counter trap. It's still easy to get out. If you have Eldritch and you have a Mizuki, by the way, if you have a set zombie card, it still works on it. So if I have Mizuki set and I have him on the field and your opponent activates something, I contribute the set Mizuki to counter the attack. Pretty decent card. You could probably switch it out for something else like uh, another Necro World Banshee of the Zombie World if you're going more in that playstyle. But I think it's pretty solid. Pretty solid. Next we go into one of the three trap monsters. Uh, one of them we don't have in this deck, but I'll still show you guys them later on after the deck profile. Conquistador of the Golden Land. Of course, continuous trap because he turns into a monster. Special summon this card is a normal monster. Level 5, 500 attack, 1800 defense. Stat wise, he's kind of crap. But if you control Eldritch the Golden Lord or his fusion, you can destroy one face up card in the field. During, and during the end phase, again, you can only activate one of these effects per turn. You can banish him, set one elixir spell or trap card directly from your deck. So, Guardian, the next trap monster, also has the same effect. In fact, I think all of the Golden Land trap monsters have this effect. So as you can, you can understand why he's a pretty decent staple in this deck, because I can just be like, all right, you activate something. Oh, that's great. Immediately get a monster on the field and destroy one of your cards. So pretty good. And you might be like, well, Nick, what if you don't have Eldritch on the field? Even if you don't have Eldritch on the field, you can still summon him as like a defensive barrier. And even if, even if he gets run over, you can use his effect to get an elixir and that elixir can then summon Eldritch. It's kind of how the deck runs. So, he's solid just because of the destruction effect and for fusion effect, which we'll get into in a moment. Next, we have Guardian of the Golden Land. Special summon this card as a normal card, same as before. It's a level 8 this time, with 800 attack and 2500 defense. So, the stats are quite a lot better. Quite, just, just a tiny bit higher. Great defensive card, especially with the 2500 defense for nothing, practically. And its effect is, if Eldritch the Golden Lord's on the field, Make the attack of one face-up monster in the field become zero. Period. Of course, even if you don't have Eldritch, blah, even if you don't have Eldritch Lord, getting him on the field, that's a pretty good defensive card. Just, just for nothing. Just trap up. Oh, I activate it. 2,500 defense. Good luck. And of course, he has the same effect. Banish from the graveyard. Set one Elixir spell or trap card directly from your deck. You can only use one of these per turn. Yada yada yada. So the main, the second main part why these two cards are really good for this deck, besides their decent effects with the Eldritch Forge. Eldritch Lord is for the fusion summon. So the fusion summon to get out Eldritch the Mad Golden Lord requires, of course, the Golden Lord and a level 5 or higher zombie. Hey, look at that. Conquistador and Guardian are both level 5 and higher. So that's how that works. So one of the good tactics I do is I'll activate an effect, destroy opponent's monster, reduce monster attack to zero, spell card, whatever. And then immediately go into the Mad Lord. And of course, we go into the staples, which is Mizuki. If you have a zombie deck that doesn't have Mizuki, you're running zombie decks wrong. Zombie World. I only have two of them because I have two Necro World Banshees. And if your opponent's destroying destroy two of your zombie worlds, they probably have something to destroy a third one. So I'm not worried too much about it. Also, with how easy it is to get out Banshee, I don't need more than two of her either. Solitary Uni Zombie, that's your synchro base in a nutshell. One uh, swall uh, Swallow Slash. It's a good card. It's it's a really good card. Even if you have to banish one of your Solitaires, you're never going to use all your Solitaires because you only have one of these cards. And destroy two of your opponent's cards right off the bat. Solid. And then one Doom King Balrog. You only need one of them. Because again, even if he gets banished, you have Omega. And his effects are amazing with Zombie World. So next we're going to go into the effects of the main boss monster of this deck. The Mad Golden Lord. So, first off, his, his name becomes Eldritch the Golden Lord while he's on the field. 
I'm not sure why that matters too much because all the cards say an Eldritch monster and there's only one and his name starts with Eldritch but that might be a thing they're making cards later on that are going to be called Eldritch but not Eldritch the Golden Lord I don't know so cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects that's pretty good right off the bat that mixed with his 3800 attack 3500 defense he's solid by defensive standards and stats he's a solid card and he's extremely easy to bring out next he has his main effect is tribute one zombie monster then tar target one face-up monster your opponent controls take control of it but it cannot attack or activate its effects that turn so something i've learned that you can do which is fairly easy to do is when zombie world's on the field you can activate its effect and take an opponent's monster say you tribute a mizuki or one of the trap monsters you get an opponent's monster during your next turn you can tribute that monster your opponent has and then grab another monster of theirs of course since it does target you don't get the same effect you can't get something you can't go against like a chaos max because chaos max can't be targeted by card effect but it's still pretty decent and of course i already went over dragon necro nether soul dragon of course omega best card for zombies in ages i, I wish they would come back give make him three I don't see why he was limited, because, well, no, I know why he was limited, but since they made that fix to the master rule, there's no point in spamming him. For people who don't know, when they had the rule, the they had the master rule 4, I believe it was, with you required link summons to bring out more than one card, Omega would break that because Omega would banish himself, then you could summon something else, like another Omega, and then that mega that you banished would come back in another spot which means that you would bypass that master rule and you could get three of them out pretty fast because of how links work that's not really needed anymore so he's not as broken anymore because you know they fixed that part of the master rule i i don't want to think about those dark days uh zeta is just here to counteract those xyz's that's pretty much the main reason he's here, is to get rid of XYZs. Or, better yet, get rid of their materials. He's also good at getting rid of just really hard to destroy monsters. Also, if you have him and Omega, a really cheap treat, uh, yeah, cheap trick you can use is Zeta, banish the monster you don't want there. It has to be special some I believe. Yep, yep. And then have Omega during standby phase send their banished monster to the graveyard. You still get your Zeta back, but they don't get their monster back. Of course, I'd only use that against, like, super hard to remove targets. Then we have the second main boss monster of this deck, Red Eyes Zombie Necro Dragon. Gains 100 attack defense for each zombie monster in the field and in the graveyards. And when Zombie World on the field, he gains 100 attack defense for each card on the field and in the graveyards. And its effect is if he destroys another zombie monster by battle, special summon one zombie monster from either graveyard to your field. With Zombie World on the field, he destroys any card on the field. He can summon any card from the graveyard. That's how I've been playing him, and he's a fantastic beater. He doesn't have any of the defenses of the Golden Lord, which is why he's like the secondary boss monster. But the main way I use him is have him... De well, destroy their boss monster. Say the boss monster has too much attack for him. Golden Lord destroys him. Then Zombie World destroys like another weaker monster the opponent has. And then Zombie World, during that same battle phase, can special summon that boss monster they had to your side of the field and then attack them with it. It's, it's really good. Uh, next we have the staple Beals the Diabolic Dragon. He's not really needed as much in this deck because it's a lot faster and you can get a lot more done on your first turn. Back in the day, if you only had like a solitaire and you didn't have a lot of stuff to back it up in the beginning, you'd have to go automatically into a Beals just to stop yourself being OTK'd. I always keep it in the deck just in case your opponent tries that or is doing something like attacking you directly a bunch. In which, oh, that's fine. Summon Beals. All that damage you're taking, Beals is getting more, more attack to run over your opponent with. Next, we have uh, Blood Me Fist. Blood Me Fist. Which is pretty much just for those people who like to stall the game. Go for their alternate win condition. Oh, that's great. Once per turn during your opponent's standby phase, inflict 3 inch damage for each card your opponent controls. And each time your opponent sets trap or spell, inflict 3 inch damage from Constant burn damage works like a charm. Next, we have Dark End Dragon. Once per turn, target one monster your opponent controls. This card loses 500 attack defense. You can send that target to the graveyard. It's yeah, pretty, pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. 
the main thing for that is that it sends it to the graveyard so it destroys it so it gets past things like Beals and the Golden Lord. And, you know, even if... Another thing is, even if he gets destroyed because he loses attack and defense, I run a zombie deck. I'm gonna summon him back. Next we have Geomath Mech Magma. That's a tongue. That's a mouthful. When this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, target up to two cards your opponent's controls and destroys them. That's the only effect you're gonna use. The second effect, I don't have any of those cards. That, when I first saw it, that's kinda broken. Because you're destroying three cards in one battle. One, one damage step, pretty much. Uh, so if your opponent is not ready for that, and it's really simple to bring out, he's a level 8 tuner. Which means Uni Zombie. One solitaire can bring him out. Can't attack with him unless you have Zombie rolled out, but if I have Zombie rolled out, you should have luck. Next we have uh, Castell, the Sky Blast from Musketeer. He's just to mostly just remove cards, send them back to the hand. Use a hand or deck? Into the deck. Okay. That's his only use. Arc is deal to your special summon, Indestructibles. More like just an additional card, just in case you can't get one of the other cards out. Because two level fours, this deck has a lot of level fours. Then we have our two Link monsters. Probably the only two I'll ever add to this deck. Uh, Vampire Sucker, if you would tribute a monster for a tribute summon, you can tribute a zombie monster your opponent controls. I've never really used that effect. I'm pretty sure you could use that effect for something like Ill Blood, but I've never used that effect. You can target one monster your opponent controls, special summon it to the, your opponent's field defense position. It becomes a zombie monster, and if a zombie monster is special summon from either graveyard, draw a card. So the effect is literally, if you use a Mizuki while she's on the field, you draw a card. You'll, you'll of course, it's only once per turn, I believe. You only use each of these effects, yeah, once per turn. But you might be like, well, what's the whole point of that summon zombie monster to your opponent's side of the field? This guy. Get Necro Dragon out, have her summon a weak monster on the field, run over it with Necro Dragon, then summon out a boss monster your opponent controlled. That was destroyed, of course. It's a, such an underrated card, Red Eyes Zombie Necro Dragon. Such an underrated card. And then, of course, another underrated card, Avendred Savior. It only requires two zombie monsters. Both of these only require two zombie monsters. Makes them super easy to bring out. Um, and its main effect is not the first one. During damage calculation, if it battles an opponent's monster, it's a quick effect. You can send one zombie monster from your deck to the graveyard. Your opponent's monster loses attack equal to the level of the monster sent times 200. So right off the bat, your opponent's going to be losing at least 600 attack. The main part of this isn't to actually keep save your life. It's to get fuel your graveyard. So what I usually use this for is getting an Uni zombie or a Mizuki to the graveyard or a Banshee to the graveyard or if I already have zombie world all that set up, a Bell Rock to the graveyard and then just it's just, it's too good to not have in the deck. It's, it's just such a good tech card. It's something your opponent's not going to expect, and it fuels your graveyard. They're not going to be like, oh, let me use all this tech I have to destroy Savior, because, well, he's not that good of a card. He's not that good of a card when you don't take into consideration the fact that he loads your graveyard up. Most opponents won't see him as using the card as a very good card. Next, we go into the side cards, which, of course, Return of the Zombies... I'll always have this as a side card. It's really good. This, if you were gonna get rid of uh, Golden Land forever, definitely would add this in. Banish one zombie on the field. Special summon one zombie monster from the graveyard. From the graveyard, the player controlled it. Again, in my last tech profiles, I was explaining, you can banish an opponent's boss monster and then force them to summon a really weak monster. Also, since it's a trap, you can activate this. Oh no, I was about to say you can use Draco Nick, the Red Eyes. Necro Dragon, but no, I can't use that. But yeah, get rid of boss monsters really fast by banishing them. If they're zombies, summon weak monsters. I believe it's saying defense position. It says defense position. Never mind. Can't use it that way. And if this card is in your graveyard, you can shuffle one banished zombie monster into your deck. And if you do, set this card. But banish it when it leaves the field. Now, one of the main things, which is why Omega will forever stay in these decks, even though he is the least dark zombie ish card, is because. He can return all of these cards back to the graveyard. That means, oh no, I activated uh, the Banish effect on Sanguine. It's now banished. Standby phase. It's now unbanished. I activate its effect again. And vice versa. Oh no, and that's what I'm saying. All of these can be reused over and over again. All these effects reused over and over again without using Eldorado. All can be used over and over again, including Return of the Zombies. So not only do you get the return zombie monster to your to your deck, set it again, banish it, 
set it back to your graveyard, which you can then set back onto the field, which I believe you can do that in the same turn. If this card is in your graveyard, you can shuffle one of your bench elements from the deck, and if you do, set this card. You can only use each of the effects once per turn. You can you can work with it. If you activate this during your turn, all right, it gets banished. Standby phase goes back in the graveyard. Your main phase, you can set it. So you can get it back every turn, practically. Really kind of broken. Also, you, technically, you can activate this effect before Omega's effect, which would banish it, and then Omega's effect would activate, and then you could send it back to your graveyard. Anyway, let, I'm going to get off topic there. Uh, Scrap Dragon is just an additional card of destroying more opponent's cards. He's probably not going to be in the side deck much longer. He's decent, easy to get out, but there's already lots of ways you can destroy opponent's cards. Another Swallow Slash, just in case you want to add an additional one. Same thing, Gold Man Forever. Now, something I was looking into was Rapid Trigger. Fusion summon one Fusion Monster from your extra deck by destroying Fusion Monsters listed on it from the field, but it can only attack Monsters special summon from the extra deck. Also, is unaffected by affected effects from any other monster, especially someone from the extra deck. Wow, that is a mouthful. Pretty much it's a perfect hentai extra deck card. It's in a side deck, because I was still testing it. Would I recommend using it? Hell no. Really interesting idea. Until you go against anything that doesn't use much of an extra deck. Which, I mean, I guess not a lot of decks have, you know, don't use extra decks anymore, but you get what I'm saying. It's, it's okay. So now we're going to go into some battles, which go over it. Wait, wait, wait. I almost forgot. We are missing a single card from the Golden Land. This guy. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. So, level 5, of course, because it's made to be used with Fusion. This one has better stats than Conquistador, but the reason I didn't use it is his effect. Banish one card from either player, either graveyard. That's it. It's not... It's, it's not good enough. It's just not good enough. I can see its uses, of course, but I already have a card like... Balrog that can banish monsters from my opponent's card, uh, graveyard, or negate their effects, and he can resummon himself. Why would I add this guy, who's, that's it, that's his only other effect? And it's not even that keep on adding him so that I can use the fusion summon, because again, all the elixirs allow you to get these cards out super fast. He doesn't really have much of a place in this deck. Now, could I see him be used in one of these decks? Of course, of course. Um, maybe if you have a banished deck, he'd be decent. If you gain life points or something like that based on banished cards, perfect. If you're going against a lot of cards that use the graveyard setup, he'd be really good too. But other than that, he's just not, he just doesn't work. Not in this deck. Now, another thing I've heard was Eldritch the Mad Gold Lord versus Belarok. That's super easy. It's Belarok. Why? Because, oh look, this card's here. Yeah, stat-wise, Golden Lord's gonna win. St you know, defense-wise, it's gonna win. But he comes back every turn, no matter what. I don't need a Mizuki to bring back Belarok. Belarok, every standby phase, he's back. He's back. It allows me to set up plays so much better with him. Another thing is, I activate Golden Lord's effect. Belarok's like, okay, banish. Okay, negate. Once you get Zombie World out in the field, which I mean, if you're using. Golden Lord anyway, you're going to use using zombies. Belarok's your nightmare card. Especially, that, that that means if you have Golden Lord on the field, and I have a Belarok, your options are attack and destroy the Belarok before I do anything, or risk having my Golden Lord banished, and or whatever zombie card I activate getting negated. He's the perfect anti-zombie zombie card, which is another reason why he's in this deck. So, yeah, there's there's no, no contending. Golden Lord is good. Belrock will forever be the king of zombie boss monsters. At least in the effect of his effects are just too good. Special summoning himself, negating card effects, negating monster effects, and banishing monsters. It's just too good. Anyway, let's go into this battles.
All right. So, as you saw, the deck fares pretty well. And even when you lose a lot of your speed or you lose a lot of the cards, the only real decks that I've seen that hold this down are burn decks. And that's usually, I think it was Trick Stars. And of course, that's because Trick Stars, oh, look, I activate anything. You're taking 300 damage plus an additional 200 damage. Oh, lovely. And as you try to stop them, the nature of the deck is, you know, oh, I destroy your land. Stop me from taking additional damage. Oh, that's fine. Next turn, I summon another land because this card effect activates. Oh, look, because I have one on the field. I special summon another one. Yada, 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 yada. That's the only real decks I've seen that hold this back. And there's no real point in using Blood Misfit. Blood Mephist. God, that's such a weird Mephist. The only reason that he's not, he doesn't really work against them is they're still going to deal a lot more damage to you than you can do to them. You can try it, of course, and it might work out every now and then, but they're, they're the only real decks that this deck struggles with. I haven't really gone against any of the major new decks yet, but I'm still fairly certain they'll do decent against this, and this will do decent against them, I should say because it's got reliability. You can reliably get out your fusion of boss monsters. It has sustainability, which means even in long duels, it can keep on running. And the ability to resurrect your boss monsters, your opponent's boss monsters, negate your opponent's card effects, destroy your opponent's cards, a, a field wipe, or gain life points. It's, it's all pretty decent. Also, you have several ways of destroying opponent's monsters without destroying your opponent's monsters. Or stealing your opponent's monsters. Or making clones of your opponent's monsters while making their attack zero. Or destroying multiple cards by destroying one card. Or setting up your graveyard by destroying opponent's monster by sending one card from your deck to the graveyard. Or just upright stealing an opponent's monster. There's just lots of ways to get past it. If your opponent has a monster, I can't even say heavy deck, monster deck, one that isn't just, you know, oh, I have four monsters and spell and traps, then you're going to be fine with this deck. Thank you all for watching. This has been Nick Red Ace, and I'll see you all in the next video. Nick Red Ace, out.